Hey everybody, this is Steve, and it's possible for all of us to pray always. If you've been watching the new season of Be The Bee, you know we've started by getting really practical. In episode 102, we talked about six things we should all be doing to make the most of the year ahead, to use it to grow closer to Christ and the people around us. In episode 103, we talked about five ways to jumpstart our spiritual lives when we feel stuck, which happens to all of us at some point. To help all of this come together, we should take a closer look at a simple saying that's frequently repeated and often misunderstood. Advice that really gets to the heart of what our goal, as Christians, should be. In his first letter to the Thessalonians, St. Paul offers a bit of simple advice you've probably heard before, that we should pray always, without ceasing. That can sound really intimidating, right? After all, we're busy enough as it is, do we really have to add constant prayer to our daily activities? And if we're not monks or nuns, is constant prayer even possible? To answer that, let's do what we do best and look at St. Paul's advice with the eyes of a bee. 1 Thessalonians is a short epistle full of encouragement and advice, and this particular advice to pray always comes towards the very end of the letter. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. To better understand this quote, we should keep in mind that prayer is much more than just words. It's communion with God. The Greek word that St. Paul used for prayer is prosephi. The word includes an important prefix, pros, which means not simply prayer, but prayer towards someone. So prayer isn't simply words, it's movement, a growing closer. It's communion. And this is a movement not simply of our minds or our hearts, but of our whole selves, including our bodies. So how do we get to the point of praying always, where we're always reaching out to God every moment of every day? And what does that look like for those of us who don't live in a monastery, who go to school or work, who have families, who live normal lives full of normal pressures and normal distractions? Well, reaching that goal of praying always begins with our daily discipline, the time we set aside each and every day for silence and prayer. That's hard to do, and some days we may not be able to do it. Even if we start with silence to gather ourselves, we may find that some days it just feels impossible to pray. The good news is that even when prayer feels impossible, there are always little things we can do to show God that we're there, that we're willing, or at least that we want to be willing, that we want to be near Him. Even when our minds and hearts feel out of control, even when every instinct within us is pushing us away from prayer, we can choose to have that struggle in front of an icon rather than on the couch. Even something as simple as standing before an icon and not praying allows us to place our struggles in God's presence, and it communicates to God our desire for Him when our words cannot. Once we're there, standing before an icon, at least struggling in God's presence, we can take things a step further and maybe even do a few prostrations. It's generally easier to control our bodies than it is to control our minds or our hearts. And just like we can use our bodies to open the door to prayer by choosing to stand in the presence of God, we can open the door a bit more by choosing to bow before Him in a prostration. Not so sure about bowing and kneeling? I get it. I know at times for me it feels like I'm doing it for show, and I'm tempted to think that what my body is doing doesn't have much to do with my prayers. Yet there's a great story from the life of St. Baisios the Athenite, one of our Be the Bee patron saints. He met a young man that didn't want to pray and thought prostrations were pointless. St. Baisios tried to show him how to do a prostration, to humbly bend down before God in prayer, yet the young man just laughed and said it looked silly. So St. Baisio said, look, you bend down to tie your shoes, right? Every time you do that, just say one Jesus prayer. So the young man did, and he found that over time, his heart softened to prayer. Over time, prayer transitioned from something that he simply did with his body, mechanically and mindlessly, to something he did within his heart. And just like that young man, we can use the simple routines of our day as a starting point for prayer. We all kneel down during the day to tie our shoes, so maybe we should all get into the habit of saying a Jesus prayer every time we do. We all brush our teeth a couple times a day, 
maybe we should all get into the habit of saying the Lord's Prayer every time we do. What other simple actions in your day can you transform into opportunities for prayer? Leave us a comment if you have any ideas. As we build our prayer outward, from our daily prayer rule to different activities throughout the day, we'll slowly begin moving in the direction of constant prayer. We'll find that even if we're not consciously saying the words of prayer, we'll be more consistently aware of God's presence in our lives. We'll find that we're doing a better job of being the bee, of finding God in everything, every day. We'll find that our whole life becomes an uninterrupted prayer, a joyful offering of praise to God. So let's be the bee and take our first steps towards praying always. Be the bee and live orthodoxy. Remember to like and subscribe and share. I'll see you all next week. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon who helped make this episode possible. To support the creation of more Orthodox Christian content, please visit patreon.com slash y2am.